All right. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about Sharif Jabber. Um, he was first arrested in 2013 for contempt of religion, but he was let go with a 7,500 LE fine. In 2015, he was found guilty on the same charge, sentenced to one year in jail, but was allowed to appeal if he paid 1,000 LE. He went into hiding instead of doing either of those. So then in 2018, he was arrested um, when, when he was at the airport. Uh, he had his passport removed from him because of the 2015 incident. Um, international organizations such as Amnesty International became involved, but Egypt had claimed that he wasn't in their custody. Okay, but, so wait, recently, but, but mm-hmm. can, going back to 2013, what was the original arrest? Like, can you be more specific about, before you go into the timeline, I just want to be very, start the conversation, but what happened that he got arrested to begin with? So he was arrested for contempt of religion, and that's because of his YouTube videos. What does it wasn't there a story like wasn't it first in his class in university that he said it? The, I think I think the the whole thing started when he was in university was studying and the teacher was talking about um, gay how rights, gay right? people should be crucified. And right. he and this was a I don't know what, what teacher I think it was a science teacher and he basically objected to that saying that uh, talking about how uh, you know being gay is natural and stuff like that and ever since then he was a, there was a target at his back I mean I don't know if this was before or after he became because he became very just to, for people just let's put this in context before we go to a, a timeline uh, Sheriff Jobber became very famous on YouTube among the Arab community because he's a uh, he produces very very good videos on atheism on gay rights on women rights uh, in Arabic for an Arab audience and he does it very professionally and he became very famous and he does it he does a beautiful job and his explanations are very amazing so he became very famous in the Arab community especially among atheists uh, the problem with all of that is that he was doing it from Egypt right which atheism is now illegal but even yeah. before atheism was illegal I don't know if they actually that passed or not but even before that just insulting people's religious views was illegal already right so he was arrested that's that's why he was arrested um i mean these are the people that are doing what we do on the front line like these are the people that are doing our activism but where it matters the most and with a lot greater risk to their safety and their security than what we do so these are the people that we need to defend and highlight and try to see i mean we go, we're going to go to the details, but this seems like a situation that seems like we don't have any solution. But we do want to bring attention to it in case somebody can come up with a solution, because so far, nobody has a solution. But sorry, Ali, for interrupting you. I just wanted to give a little bit of a context before. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, um, where was I? Yeah, in 2018, he was arrested. At least that was, they illegally detained him at the airport after taking away his passport. Um, and he was able to tweet this stuff out um, and write messages on his Patreon to let people know what was going on. Um, so when international organizations became involved, it was very scary because Egypt was saying that he wasn't in their custody, um, which, you know, when we when we see stories that somebody is in custody and then a government is lying and <laughs> saying that he's not in their custody when clearly uh, Sharif was in their custody that became extra uh, scary as far as what he's having to deal with there on March 17th on his Twitter he March said, 17, 2019 19, okay. now we're in the current time mm-hmm. um, he said if he's arrested he'll be jailed up to 15 years currently he says he has two warrants for his arrest treason uh, for being funded by unknown sources and blasphemy, which is what his original two kind of were around as well. Um, Egypt has, like I said earlier, taken his passport, and he won't be able to legally leave Egypt that way. Um, He did do a fundraising uh, campaign, I guess, uh, this year, to which he gained over $37,000 in one week uh, for his escaped funds. So people definitely care. Um, and they definitely want to get him out of there. On his own website, uh, there was a news article posted six days ago 
um, that quoted him by saying, I'm lost between two very hard choices, either to leave this war field and live with a feeling of giving up or to stay and risk spending many years in prison, not knowing when I'll get out or whether or not I'll be safe inside the whole time or not. What makes things worse is that I only have till May 20th next month to decide. All right. So just to, uh, just to also discuss it, what his plan says. Uh, yeah. Rosanna is saying, yeah, dude needs to leave period. End of story. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to that uh, regarding because he had the opportunity to leave a couple. Um, what, what, what year was this? I forgot what year, a couple of years ago, and he didn't leave. And some people are criticizing for him for that, for not leaving when he could have. But we'll get to that. But his plan with regards to the Patreon money that he's raising, um, <laughs> saying it's okay, we all make mistakes. Um, with regards to the Patreon money he's raising, because he's raising a lot of money that he might never be, get access to if he goes to prison. I don't know how that works uh, and how he's going to be able to withdraw that without the government taking that away from him. But his plan was, and some people think this plan was ridiculous, uh, but it was probably the only option he had because he had he already tried to leave at, after the after the first opportunity opportunity that he had to leave, but he didn't take it. I think he tried to leave again twice after, right? Twice in the airport, or was it once? I forgot. It was once in the airport, and that's when they took his passport. Right. Okay. And the government stopped him, but now, uh, wait, the the government took his passport. So how is he going to? So now his plan is to buy citizenship, buy citizenship. Of what country? I think it was Dominican Republic. Right now, he, uh, according to his Twitter, he's just saying any country. Um, so he's looking to get citizenship in any country. I know, I know, but but why was he raising money? Okay, like uh, he was raising a lot of money because he calculated that he needs one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to buy citizenship from, I think, Dominican Republic. Um, no, so Zane is saying he could apply for asylum. You can't apply for asylum unless you leave. You end up landing somewhere, I think, right? Right, and a lot of people do. As Zane said earlier, every every border has holes. Um, many people do have their passports taken from them, um, and they are able to escape by boat into another country and, and file for asylum there. So there are ways to get out. Um, mm. So it just it, it depends on what he wants to do. And and everyone's gonna judge, right? Everyone's gonna right. criticize him for whatever choice he makes here, regardless. We have to understand that this is his life. He even on Twitter recently has said <clears throat> he understands the um the repercussions for his actions. He understands why he's doing what he's doing, and he understands that there are consequences to what he's doing. Um so Everyone, I think, that's criticizing him just needs to give him some breathing room here. This is his life, um, and and he's he's an activist, and I know activists live their activism, and so it's not as easy as just, oh, I'm just going to go now. Oh, I'm just going to escape now. There's a lot of risks to escaping, even by boat. Um, a lot of risks. He can get into a lot of trouble. He can he can die. Uh, so. There, there's a lot of, of weighing going on here for Sharif, and I do feel, you know, so I feel for him. And I really hope I, that even more people will give this situation attention so that he can raise that money so he can buy a citizenship. I think, okay, but I, Ali, I think it's fine to criticize him. I might, it's fine to criticize his method because maybe he will see something in those criticisms that he will get some ideas from, right? I just think that if people want to point out that he's wrong, um Give they a should they should you know no it's it's fine to point out that something might not work i just think that if well, some people are using uh pointing out his mistakes as a way to say we shouldn't help him yeah. that that's where i think they uh, uh you know people are like oh he should have done this he should have left when he could well I mean, the reason uh, when he's the when he had the opportunity to leave and now he can't leave when he had the opportunity to leave and he didn't, he said because he wants to change things from within. And that's I mean, that's pretty admirable. I mean, you might say that, oh, that's stupid. He shouldn't have done that. Now he's paying the price. And he actually now agrees. He feels like he regrets not leaving when he could. But honestly, that's that's 
that's the kind of thing that people do that change the world for the rest of us. I mean, come on, like that's pretty, that's pretty admirable, even if you think it was a mistake. Okay, um, I'm not saying that people should do that, but when they do that, I think we should appreciate that they that they they took a risk for the rest of the other people. Uh, some other people point to the fact that they tried to reach him and they tried to give him uh, lawyers and stuff, and he didn't reply. So I guess we tried to help him and he didn't answer. So I guess whatever. I mean, I don't, uh, it's really hard to understand what's going on on his end. I'm pretty sure he's getting a million messages. Well, uh, do uh, well, Zane, say, say, you could, uh, you, you're chatting. You feel, feel free to I just, I can't say anything because you keep, you won't shut up. You just keep going. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> <happy here>. uh, <laughs> uh, let's give Zane a minute. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm trying to, okay. So, what I was saying is, uh, in regards to your previous comment, is like there's a difference between shaming and criticizing, right? Mm. Don't don't get me wrong. I don't like my money wasted either. But um, at the same time, when you say you're going to help someone, you need to come from a place of non-judgmentalness. If you can't do that, then don't help them. Just stay out of the fucking picture. Um, when it comes to him, he sounds like a young guy. I, I don't know how old he is, but he sounds like a young guy, right? Young people uh, tend to... When, when they have a really stressful situation like what he's facing and they don't have a lot of experience and they're getting 10 different pieces of advice from all kinds of direction, they don't know what to do and they often pick the wrong thing to do. That's just life, okay? Um, so I don't really blame him for making the wrong decisions. It is what it is, water on the bridge. We got to move on from that, right? The If he was here right now in this meeting, I would tell him there's only one option for you, man, all right? M martyrs don't accomplish shit, right? So you don't need to be a martyr. Get the fuck out of the country period in the story. If you have to cross the border illegally, fucking do it, right? Get to the country that you can file, file asylum for, right? And then you can figure it out from there. Um, I understand the sea is dangerous, right? But, you know, Syrian refugees understood the difference between life and, and, and uh, you know, they, they understood the importance of, of life. So he's got to he's gotta get his priorities straight. Him being alive is more important to getting his message out than anything else, right? It doesn't matter if he's in Egypt because he's having, you know, these uh, ethical dilemmas, right? Trust. If, if he was here, I'd tell him, trust me when I say, nobody gives a shit what country you're in. All they give a shit about is if you can keep spreading your message or not. And as long as you're alive to do that, that's what we would prefer. Um, right. So that's what we got. That's the message. Very we well said. I agree. What? Okay, there are some things I disagree on. By the way, if I, if I uh, start speaking nonstop and you want to add something, just tell me in the live chat that you want to add something so I'll, I'll, I'll shut up, I'll let you speak. Uh, but, or just go like this. Um, with the, I do agree that um, we shouldn't, like, okay, we should criticize him if he makes mistakes, but people that want to use that as an excuse not to help him, I think that's absolutely hard, wrong, and I agree with Zane on that. But in regards to le him leaving, uh, a lot of people are saying, why, don't, why doesn't he just cross the border illegally? You have to understand that in Egypt, he will. I don't think he will ever get... Yeah, I'm pretty sure, almost 100% sure that he will not get uh, executed for for anything he said. All right? Uh, Egypt is... He will get prison, many, many long years prison sentence, right? Uh, pr uh, maybe uh, 15 years, I heard some people say. Um, 5 to 15 years, depending on how many things they want to add up together. But he, it's not Iran or Saudi Arabia. He's not going to get a death sentence. But if he tries to cross the border illegally and go to, I don't know where, Syria, now he's putting his life in danger. Now that's the situation where he could actually get killed. And that's what makes it complicated for him, right? I've, that's why I see maybe that's why he was looking into, um, uh, you know, just buying citizenship from another country. Maybe that's the way he could have gotten out rather than crossing the border illegally because now he's going into a completely new level of actually putting his life in danger rather than just saying prison. Zane, you want to add something? Yeah, I, I disagree. I don't see it as complicated as that at all. So um, you, to me, it's just, to me, what you're arguing is the difference between a slow death and a fast one. Okay, so... Uh, mental health is one thing I take into consideration when it comes to activists because mental health is something that deteriorates very quickly when you're put under siege, right, by your own government. Um, so when it comes to him, yeah, sure, he's not going to face the death penalty. But if he gets imprisoned, he, he will fucking become uh, Chelsea Manning in no time, meaning he'll be suicidal, he'll be attempting suicide. It doesn't take that long. 
Or, um, or he'll be killed by a guard or another inmate. It's, or, it's, you know, there's other possibilities too. So. And, and you have to remember, this is um, this is not a this is not a country or a region where they're not going to go out. Where police and guards are not going to go out of, or yeah, they're not going to go out of their way to protect you from people who hate you, right? So it's not like they're going to be like, oh no, he has you know civil liberties. So even though we hate the dude, we're going to protect his rights. No, no, they're not, right? If the mob wants him, they'll take him. Um, so in, in regards to that, I understand your, your, your argument. I'm not saying it's uh, entirely incorrect. Um, but what, what I am saying is him staying in that country is, uh, the, the risk to his life is there irrespective of how fast his life may go. Right. Yeah. But what, what I'm suggesting is that from his position, uh, it's more com like it might look more complicated, you know, I'm, I'm not, yeah, I'm, I understand that. We, you could say, well, uh, well, going illegally crossing the border seems like the clear position to you. I'm just saying that um, why there are reasons why it might not be for even if we think he's making a mistake by picking one option over another. It's it's a little from his position. Things might look a little bit more complicated than what we think sitting outside and looking at it from outside in, right? Like there's a million things that we don't know what's going on with him right now from his position. Yeah, from his I, perspective. I, I, I understand the the complexity from his perspective. That that right. I understand. I'm saying from a third party perspective, it is not complex. We, we we can see things a lot more clearly because the stress is not put on us. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If I was in his situation, which I've been in similar situations, but not not because the government was per persecuting me, but I'm just talking about stress levels, right? Because I, I'm a veteran. I understand what war is, okay? Right. Um, and the problem with stress is that it skews your perspective. It makes everything seem like a very difficult decision, right? It, that, that's what stress does. It, it disables your frontal cortex and emotion takes over. Um so I understand it's complex from his perspective, especially when you have to do something that's very much outside your comfort zone, like leave the country of, you know, your home of origin, have to deal with people that you probably can't communicate with because you speak a different language. Uh, you have a different culture you have to uh, compete with as well because of the people you're going to interact with, the people who have to smuggle you, the countries you have to cross borders up to get from one country to another. N none of these people you know, right? It is a very risky thing to do, completely outside of the comfort zone of most young people. They shouldn't have to do this in the first place. Mm. Nonetheless, nine out of ten times the hard decision is the right decision for complex situations like this. Not that's that's not a scientific rule; it's just a rule of thumb. Um, and so that's why I argue the the way I'm arguing. Um, yeah. It, another thing is that we don't know, as some people point out. I don't know how accurate this is. Is that Egypt apparently is? Um, they're very. Some people are suggesting that they are. I mean, they have a lot of uh, soldiers at the borders, and they are, you know, Egypt has mastered the art of controlling its borders, especially because of, uh, you know, the Sinai uh, area and also the uh, Palestine border. So it's not as easy as crossing other some other borders in the region, right? That, that's a that's a fair argument. Um, if it's, that's why I was saying, you know, all borders have loopholes. If it just so happens, this happens to be the one border that doesn't. Okay, fine. We, I can see, you know, right. we have to find a different plan. But that, t then what, what, what he's, what he's saying is that he's already checked this info thoroughly, um, right. or to the best of his ability anyway. And there's no, there's no way he can get out. Okay, fine. Moving on, different plan. Right. R if that's right. not the case, though, then I think that's his optimal option is to sneak out of one of the yeah. borders. He he claim he himself claims that, and I don't I don't know that you would probably disagree with this. Is that he has looked into all options, and there is no other option um, other than buying. So I don't know, but now apparently his most recent tweet, tweet or Patreon post, I'm not sure. Ali, based on what Ali says, it seems like he is suggesting that he does have a way out. What was the last uh, message that we got from him, Ali? The latest one. It, the, was that the one that was 10 days ago that was on his news that quoted him yeah uh whatever like what i don't know he, he said i'm lost between two very hard choices either to leave this war field and live with the feeling of giving up i don't understand that okay i'm gonna you we said people shouldn't be criticizing him i'm gonna criticize him like it, I, uh, I already explained this earlier though remember I yeah. told you having ethical issues so yeah it's just a young people thing it's not He'll get over that in time once he actually leaves, but he won't get get over that until he 
until you. I just don't understand why he has to buy citizenship because he can be given a visa so the way asylum works, for instance. Right. If you're unable to get to, let's say, Canada, okay, um, he can actually be sponsored by somebody in Canada. And then Canada can issue him a visa and he could leave the country. Yeah, but based on what you said, it seems like he now understands that he has other ways out because it seems like he has that option. Right. He hasn't because said before, what that option is, though. I know, but it, his latest message suggests that he has an option. Because when he was, when he had a, pa when he first had his Patreon post up saying that he wants to buy citizenship, he made it sound like the, his only option was to buy citizenship, and there's nothing else. But now, based on this latest message, it seems like. He's suggesting that he has a choice. So he has a choice, and the option is right there for him to take to leave, to be able to leave. So somebody has, somebody has somehow reached out to him and has made this probably possible for him. Is he have that option? So he just needs to just take it, take that option. I mean, um, it seems like, I mean, if he does have that option, I think that there's nothing we have we we can do other than encouraging him to just take that whatever option, like just fucking leave, right? I mean. Uh, if you ever watch this, Sheriff, I don't think you do because you, you would because you get probably a million notifications and messages every day. But um, you make YouTube videos, right? You make YouTube videos and you could make that from anywhere in the freaking world, right? That you don't have to be in Egypt for your messages to resonate with people. People are not going to blame you for leaving. If you're going to be the le last person people should should be able to... Uh, blame for leaving Egypt after all the shit you went through, okay? Your message will resonate wherever in the world you make it them from. Just get the fuck out of there. If if your if your latest message is a suggestion that you found an option to leave, please for the love of Darwin take it, I don't know. Just take that option. Uh, but I mean is there anything we can? Because a lot of people come to Atheist Republic, and they, we got we have received hundreds of messages asking us to do something. But what do what can we do? Like other than talk about it, or bring attention to it. In this case, I don't know if we can do anything other than bring attention to it. And it's given that it seems like he now has an option. I don't know what we have. Zane, go on. You can you can make memes, right? So you you are you're already kind of doing that. That's one of the points of this video. Um, but I mean, um, I mean, actual memes, like a photo with a message, right, or a picture with a message and try to make it go viral. It's not easy, but um, there, there, are all, there are campaigns to do that. So, for example, if you're trying to get a specific message to him saying, Sharif, leave the damn country, just put that in the meme and put whatever, you know, fancy photos behind that and tell your social media following to share the shit out of this and try to get it to Sharif. Get, make him a clear message. Get the fuck out of the country. That's, That's a that good happens. idea because because yeah. he has until May twentieth to figure out which one he's going to do. Um, I think that's actually brilliant because he needs encouragement to make a choice one way or another now. Um, atheism needs no martyrs, like Zane was saying earlier. Uh, he's he's going to. People are going to lose out on so much if we lose him. So, yeah, if he has told me 20th, let's do that. Let's put out some memes saying, Sharif, leave the country. <laughs> Sharif, leave the country. We love you, whatever you... We love we, you, yes. We love your video. We will love your messages wherever you make them from. Yeah, right. Go on. I have a, a question. Uh, can we reach him? Can we... Uh, is responding? Uh, no. To us? That, no. That's the point of going viral. So, since we don't know if we will reach him... We just try to, uh, there, there's a specific name to this tactic, but I can't remember. Basically, we just try to make sure that the, the message spreads as far as, uh, as far and wide as possible so that either it reaches him directly to his account by a recommendation or whatever or on his feed, or it reaches one of his contacts and his contacts can show him. Um, that's the idea. So. Well, yeah, because I think he's going to feel guilty if he leaves, right? So if you're right. If we kind of show that people will support him, uh, you know, he shouldn't feel guilty if he makes his videos outside of Egypt. I think maybe that will give him some motivation to be like, yeah, maybe I should get the fuck out of here. Right? So, yeah, you're right. Let's do that. Like, let's come up with a message. Uh, maybe if, if once we put this video out, people could suggest what message we're going to put out of this. A message from us to Sharif telling him that he deserves to live in, you know, 
his message will we will still um, his message will still resonate no matter where in the world he makes them from. We don't need martyrs. Please, please get out of Egypt. We don't want to lose him. Something like that. Uh, so that he knows that he will have our backing and support and maybe make him feel less guilty for leaving. Yeah, maybe something like that would help. Do you so guys want to... No use to apply to the UN or the EU or any other organization. The, okay, uh, Roy, the problem is that um, there's two things. First of all, his case is already in human rights organization. He has such a f easy... Like, if he's out... He shouldn't have a problem getting asylum, okay? Mm -hmm. We don't need to make a case to right now to any country because as soon as he steps foot in the in the civilized world in Canada, Australia, somewhere, he will get he will get the status that he r r needs to stay there, right? Mm -hmm. He's one of the easiest cases to make, okay? okay. So he, the main point is that he just needs to get out, right? So. The, uh, the, the, there's two reasons why you would want to go to international organizations like uh, UN or stuff like that. One is to get somebody a refugee status or something like that. That He doesn't need that. Another issue is to pressure the country to let somebody else. And with Egypt, that's one of the hardest countries to do that with, given that they already have thousands thousands of political prisoners it's one of the worst countries when it comes to political having poli like accusations of being people being terrorists as soon as the government doesn't like them just fly like they just use it so easily right mm -hmm. uh, anybody they don't like all of a sudden becomes a terrorist and they're in jail and the international pressure is being all the international pressure of get letting people out of prison is being spread over thousands of people so it's hard to get anybody out um Zane, you wanted to say something? T terrible tactic, making oppressors care is not a thing. Actually, no, Zane, I disagree with you on that. Sometimes, it, it, I, I can tell you, like, even with Saudi Arabia, which is one of the worst uh, countries, second worst country when it comes to human rights, I think, after North Korea, um, things did change because of international pressure. Like, international pressure does have an effect even on the worst countries, sometimes. You just proved my point for me. Why? <laughs> the, the point I was trying to make is they don't they don't do things for ethical or moral reasons. They don't magically grow a conscience. They'll do things because you took some money away from them, you took some access to resources away from them, you put what you just said, political pressure, right? right. Oppressors don't change their minds uh, as far as their the way they operate. Of course, uh, but 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 bringing international attention to something makes them change change their behavior not because all of a sudden they care. But because of the international pressure that is being put on them, right? Uh, like Saudi Arabia has been feeling the pressure ever since Khashoggi, and it has made them change their behavior on many things, right? Uh, even Iran, there are some people that were uh, on death row, and international pressure made made them bring, you know. So it sometimes works. Sometimes, yeah. So yeah, don't, like don't. Uh, yeah, but on this and and the Egypt case is actually very difficult right now, given the number of political prisoners around. All right, but let's go with Zane's suggestion. Let's go with um, Ali. Um, do you want to come up with like Ali and I could come up with a draft of what what the message should be? Zane, we could also share it with you. We could actually um, and you know and Roy, do you want like actually we could. Uh, yeah, go. So e even though I said meme, it doesn't necessarily have to be a meme, right? It, it could be whatever you guys decide for it to be, right? It could also be like a, I don't know, 15 second video where you can share oh. anything and add, right? There's many tactics you can use. You guys decide whatever the best tactic is because I'm not a PR person, right? I, I know a little bit of marketing, but not enough to make professional recommendations. We could make ask Pamela to. Oh, we lost Roy because of Israel. See, uh, uh, um, I don't know where he is. Roy doesn't have good internet connection, but we could, um, um, Ali. We could ask uh, Pamela maybe to see if she could make a very short video addressed to. That would Sherry. be amazing. Yeah. That okay. would be amazing. Yeah, let's. We try. could also. Oh wow! There's so many things you can do. We could even ask just random people to make short you know, 15 second videos and send them to us, we can put them together. Right. Right. Oh yeah. You're right. We could ask our team. Everybody say like everybody, every, everybody like just come up with a phrase that everybody will repeat. Like Sheriff. 
get 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 out leave egypt sharif leave egypt sharif leave egypt sharif like like uh, and then like one message that goes like let's make it no, no longer than one minute sharif we, uh, we we heard that you're just considering leaving egypt but you think that maybe you shouldn't we just want to say that please do we need you um we don't we don't think you you know you worded better than i am like we don't think that you need to stay in egypt for like we will love and support you wherever you are uh we think you know something that you know drives that point just write it in the more uh, you can use uh celebrity faces right so you can have the entire community involved like you were just saying ali right uh you can start off with the first 30 seconds of celebrity faces so that would be you that would be Muhammad from XMNA, right? Just people who are prominent in the, the atheist space, whatever you want to call it. Each one of you guys saying something, right? So you could start off saying, Sharif, you need to leave the country. Muhammad can come right after you and be like, and you need to leave now. And then what's her name? Uh, Sarah Hader. Uh, right. Uh, right. She can come after that. And don't worry, we'll be waiting for you at the border, right? A continuous message, something like that. This is just... How happy. about... How and then about after the, all that, right, you can have all the people that Ali was talking about saying, Sharif, leave the country now, holding up a sign, whatever they're doing, I don't know. And just a whole bunch of people in the community playing afterwards. And that can be the entire minute. How about, how about we have a um, one-minute message, but the part that Ali says, Sharif, leave Egypt, that part gets cut. And then we show five, or ten, five to ten people repeat that part, Sharif, leave Egypt. And then Ali picks that and continues to the very end. But that way, uh, it would be easy. What we're asking for, peop to, for people to send us, it would be very small clip. Just send yeah, us a video, not. say, Sharif, leave Egypt. That's the only part that we will play on repeat. And then Ali will end the message that way, right? So I think we could ask... Uh, by the way, Drew made a video about Sharif uh, 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 in 2018. That was very good. Go check that out. Uh, so maybe we'll ask Drew from Genetically Modified Skeptic. I'm thinking of asking Andrew from Cosmic uh, Skeptic. Uh, Andrew, Mohammed Sayed, see if he could do that. Sarah, maybe. Who Did else? Andrews. Seth Andrews, yes. Seth Andrews. Hemet Mehta. Uh, Hemet Mehta. I don't know if he would do that, but that would be great if he does. Hemet Mehta. Yeah, okay. Let's ask as many people as possible. Even uh, even if half of them or even if 25% of them gets ba get back to us. And that's all we want. A very short clip saying, Sharif, leave Egypt. Right? Um, and then we'll get, uh, yeah, Pamela as well. Yeah, that would be that would be beautiful. All right, let's do that. Sounds good. And let, so we need to do two things: come up with a full script. I think Ali, you should read the script, okay? okay? And then when you get to the part that says Sharif leave Egypt, it will cut into all these other people saying that, and then cut back to you, and then end the video. The whole video shouldn't be longer than one minute, and then we'll post that everywhere. Okay, great. Let's do it. Good plan. All right. Yay! Yay. All right, guys. Um, did you want to let's end this right now? And uh, did you guys want to add anything? Uh, do you want to talk about Sohail or, or no? Oh, right. So Sohail, Arabi. Uh, I, okay, so let me just give you an update on uh, Humanist International. Um, so Humanist International is saying that the way that we want to partner with Humanist International um, is they are going to help us give uh, of official briefings that they produce for certain organizations. And I, we want to partner with Humanist International and get those kind of briefings from them. So, And then we'll use those briefings uh, to make it official and legit because it's from a legit human, uh, human rights organizations to go to... Um, First of all, to use that as a declaration that we, we that we're going to have a day, uh, we, oh, we need to pick a day for. So we are going to pick um, Sohail for the case that we're going to have these events on because Sohail is on death. He's already arrested. Sohail Arabi. For people that don't know, go. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description for his case. Uh, he's in jail for blasphemy, and he's on he's on and off death row all the time. Um, and we need to get him out. And his case is not getting any attention, right? Um, and we are, after we get this official briefing, I'm hoping from Humanist International, then we could use that as a declaration and come up with a date. 
uh, I need you guys to co- think of a day that will be the best for this to organize events using Atheist Republic consulates to organize events in many different cities. Um, and then with these events and with the, the, the with the briefing that we have from Humanist International, then we're going to start contacting reporters, podcasters, and YouTubers to go on their their show and talk about Sohail Arabi's case and review the briefing that we got from Humanists International. Um, and then at the day of the event, hopefully we could get some news coverage on that. Then once we get the news coverage on the on these protests and rallies, we'll use the news coverage and the video coverage of the protests and rallies, plus the briefing that we got from Humanist International to start contacting politicians and get the politicians to start to see that this is getting enough attention for it to be protests and rallies around it. And also it's official enough to have a to have a human rights organization produce a briefing about it and then use those to not only us, for us to contact politicians to start pressuring Iran on it, but other people to start calling their representative, their congressman, uh, to to say something again about Iran and start pu- pushing uh, pressure on Iran for this specific case, right? And then we'll move from there. And then once some, we get some politician, we won't stop there. Once we get some politician attention to it, then we go to international organization like the uh, United Nations and stuff and see. We, we, we'll see how far we can keep escalating this. Every time we accomplish one level of escalation, then we go to the next, we go to the next, we go to the next. So that's our plan with Israel Arab. Is that, what do you think? I love it. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to start thinking about a date. Um, We need at least two months preparation to get all of the consulates involved, get all of our um, information correct, get proper research on where we have um, Iran consulates in our cities and, you know, get everything just completely organized and people behind us. So um, I'll be, I'll be coming up with that this week after I get in touch with everyone and see how, how it's looking. Right. Probably it's good to, for it to be either a Friday or a Saturday. Yeah. Absolutely. And also a day that it doesn't collide with some other thing that people are doing. Right. Um, we also have to focus a lot, make sure that the places that we do make sure that we have good events is um, is in, con- in cities where there's an Iranian embassy. So they could do it in front of the Iranian embassy. But, but m- my definition of a good event is not necessarily an event where a lot of people show up. Even if four people or three people show up with a sign that says free Sahel Arabi in front of the Iranian embassy, if that's properly recorded and pictures and videos of taken of that, that we could even make that go viral. Okay. Like we could make that get attention to that. Right. A lot of people get discouraged. Like, Oh, only four people are showing up. It doesn't matter. Just get people out there and record it, okay? I can tell you, even just one offline activity with four people has more impact than one online activity with 100,000 people. I don't know why, but that has more impact and just get it done somehow, right? Um, Zane, you wanted to say something? You're typing. Uh, No, just real quick, um, because we're doing two cases. Uh, So one with... With Sharif's case, right quick, because I remember Ali, you mentioned last week to make sure we check with uh, organizations on the ground so that whatever tactics we implement before we implement them to make sure we're not screwing the guy over, right? Uh, so yeah, I guess before we make any videos, we should make sure that leaving the country is not going to, I don't know, somehow a- adversely affect him right this second if we put that message out. And then, uh, uh, and then it seems like you've already done all that in regards to Sohail's case in my, in my correct well, well I'm in touch well okay yeah so I'm right now I'm looking at a message from Humanist International we're discussing and then preparing preparing a briefing for us we will we oh. will wait for that briefing uh, and if they don't do it we'll make sure we talk to somebody else we will wait for that before we move forward right but I'm hoping we could get it done fast because we want to move forward on this fast. But I'm pretty sure we'll get it. He already confirmed, uh, he already seems to have confirmed that this case could use more attention. Uh, but I do want it official and writing or something so that we um, we make sure that, I mean, 
we we could only work with the best information that we have, right? We always might make mistakes, but we have to make mis- we have to make decisions, and we have to make it with whatever information that we have. And I think this is the best we can do when it comes to. So yeah, we'll 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 make good point. Like let's make sure that we have those checks and balances in place with, before we do something. I just want to make sure it doesn't slow us down too much. But you're right, we have to make sure that we have those. Yeah, I'm just. Uh... Personally, I don't like asking for permission, um, but that's I, I'm a very risky individual. Um, but since Ali mentioned that, I wrote it down last week in the notes, and I just figured we might as well, uh, for testing purposes, stick to a, a methodology and see what happens. And in the right. future, we'll know if it hinders us more than it helps us or not. So. Right, right. I, yeah, and also, once we come, we'll build this relationship with the Humanist International, I, this process might become more, you know, Streamlined. Streamlined, yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, you guys know what you're doing. I'm not worried. <laughs> no, no, actually, you, you, you should be worried because you gave us a lot of good points today that we didn't think about. So um, thank you for that. Uh, no worries. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.